So the set view. Think of a wedding. In a wedding, everything is orchestrated for a reason to present the bride. There is the prelude, there is the intro, it stirs the emotion, and then she comes out, there's specific music. It's a whole production, but everything is coordinated on purpose. Same thing for the set view. You need to actually be coordinating all six songs or all four songs together to actually accomplish what you're attempting to do. We just focus on Jesus Christ and his work, but we'll move through that, not just the cross, but how he's saving you today, how you're working on your salvation with trembling, how you need healing here, how you need victory over this. All those concepts need to be, um, not in every set, but the idea is that your set list does work together. There's some kind of cohesiveness. Uh, so song selection uh, for a set, I'll look for lyrics uh, to a specific topic. Uh, we did something about, we did a sermon on the poor, and there's actually a lyric in the verse of the song called Inside by Jared Anderson. It talks about seeing the gospel on the faces of the poor. And the song in general doesn't seem to fit that. Like, that's not exactly that. We're not talking about the, you know, God changed from the inside. But I loved that that lyric was there, because they're not like songs about the poor. You don't have them, you know? I mean, great. How we, it was a, we were talking about being generous. But that lyric, I wanted to, in my mind, isolate it. I wanted to bring it out. And uh, so I, I picked that song based off that lyric in that song. Um, maybe I've done it for a while. I was talking about the playlist. You know what? We decided as a body that this song was good for our body. We haven't done it in three months. This happens to me actually all the time. We haven't done it in five months. Well, then do it. You know, I'm, I'm trying to make that there is rocket science to it, and there's always doing it. Sometimes there's not. Just pick the song again, please. Yeah, it's okay. Put it up front. Put, it, <laughs> put in the first song. Put in the second song. But you got to get it back in. If you're committed to a song, commit to the song. If you're not committed to the song, then kick it out. But if you're committed, do it. Do it at a, at a regular frequency. Um, will there be a person broken by the sermon needing healing and a song fits that? Uh, um, and so sometimes I think through where will this, where will the sermon bring someone to a point of repentance or change? And then do I have a song that fits that? So, so maybe this is good. We're talking the post-message song here. Okay, great. The message is going to go to here for change uh, or recommitment to Christ, you know, something like that. Do I have songs that fit that in the overall theme of it? And then I want to put that there. Um, also, it says a relatively cohesive concept for the dynamic curve. I do want to talk about the dynamic curve. Your set is a is six songs, but it's together. It's all one thing. And so, in my mind, the whole set list should have a dynamic to it. My favorite dynamic, you start out big and loud, and then you slowly bring it down, <laughs> contemplative to the sermon. You come out of the sermon, contemplative, and then you go back up. I call it the U dynamic curve. Copyright, there's none. But I like that. I like that curve a lot. I think it's great. It brings people in, engage them in the front end. You then help bring them to a point of contemplation. They engage in the sermon. You then help them make decisions or have healing at the end. You bring them out excited again to go out and win the world for Jesus, so to speak. Or, you know, be committed to what you've made decisions for. I like that curve a lot. Uh, I had a really odd week last week. I had a six song set, but it was really two, or it was three sets of two, 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 and two. It was really hot and fast up front. And then we, it was the U curve, but we then did a confession there, which really dropped the energy, not the energy, but the kind of the energy bound in a bad way, and then down to kind of more of a, a subtle set or a contemplative set. And we had um, the song Breakthrough, Tommy Walker at the end for a, a healing time, and then we like, you know, <laughs> went way up at there. Um, the odd thing is actually it came down, and then the last song before the sermon though was Forever Rain, which is slow at the front, but then really builds at the end. So it kind of went like this, and it spiked. And then it came out and went back out. Nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying there is a dynamic curve to use. I like the U as a general template a lot. Um, but there's nothing wrong with it. What I'm saying is have a curve. Have a point to what you're doing. You know, that point should work within what the pastors are doing. You know, maybe it is dangerous to start out with low and contemplative. But it's not like you can't do it. You know, if you're wanting to set a mood, I mean, I'm not just talking about maybe Sunday morning worship set. Maybe it could be, you know, we're doing an Easter theme and it's Monday, Thursday. So you want to have maybe your dynamic curve then. These scenarios is we're going to start really contemplating and we're going to have a slow build, really slow build, and then at the end we're going to hit it. Maybe that's the curve. I don't really care what you do. I want you to care that you know what you're doing and you have a curve to it. Does that make sense, the dynamic curve of a whole set? And that's something I try to communicate even when I'm leading with my band. Like, guys, we're doing, I know this is a hot song, but it's in the four slot or it's post-message. You can't do that because the dynamic curve of the set isn't that. 
we need to play this more subtle, demure. Uh, so, all right, the order, uh, ordering uh, the set, then you do the same way. You then work songs. We know what you want to do with the set. You kind of work them around. Or maybe when you're trying to move songs around, you've picked your six songs or your five songs. As you're moving them through, maybe you'll see a dynamic curve come about. A curve come about. Maybe you won't force it. Maybe it'll be like, how am I going to sort these songs? I have these, these five songs, and if I put, I actually move them all around. It's like a Rubik's Cube almost. I'm like, no. And I'll think through if I'm going to sing this song to that song. And I don't like the curve. Like it starts like going all over the place. I'm like, nope, wrong. And I like jumble them up again. And I'm like, and I'm trying to put the pieces together. And then maybe I'll be like, okay. And I see the curve, how it's going to go through it. And I go, yeah, I like that. I can see because what's happening is when I'm talking dynamic curve, we're really talking about the emotional response of the congregation. They have to be able to follow you on this emotional curve that you're going to attempt to do with them. And so it needs to be decided, and you know how you're getting to it. And there probably shouldn't be like gigantic changes. And if you do, you better smooth them. Or I actually did one this last week. It was really actually a gigantic change. But there's a talking confession piece right in the middle that totally bridged it properly. Uh, but it's, you have to be really careful. You don't want to do that in whiplash people. So um, I don't have time for set examples, but I was going to give you some set examples uh, of what I've done. Um, Uh, transitions, I think, are important along with this. Um, you got to be able to get into a song, get out of a song. I don't really like that air, but I'm not anti-silence for the record. I mean, I think there's definitely a place for silence. You know, it's good to be still and know that I am God, as the scripture says. Um, but I really like, if I can, kind of get people locked in. You know, here's the gospel. They see it with the camera. They're focused in on it. Let's just keep them there. I don't want distraction getting them out of that mode. And, you know, a lot of people are, we're a multitasking society. It's pretty easy to check out. I mean, anything could, and I'm done. And so I actually don't like any um, silence necessarily in a worship set. Like, I want to go from song to song to song to song. I don't even like click-offs. I, uh, uh, but I don't. And so you have to practice, though. This is its own trade. This is its own skill. Um, I lead out on the guitar most of the time. Uh, and so, uh, my favorite, the easiest change is hit a song, we're done with the song, I actually will keep playing eight bars. I will re, I will vamp the vamp, I will, I will play the vamp, for four more bars, eight more bars. It tapers the end of a song, which is great. So it gives a kind of finale of the congregation, I emotionally engage with this song, I emotionally engage with these lyrics, and now I'm able to like close that piece of it, and, I, and they're like ready for a new song now. So I will taper it off with the guitar, everyone else that may change their music right now. This is a very practical scenario. <laughs> Everyone changes. You know, the drummer gets ready. Uh, even he might give silent clicks to whoever the next lead instrument is. Um, and then the piano plays. The piano actually takes off the next, maybe they do the first four bars. Uh, so it's a nice kind of, I taper out, they taper in, and then we go full band. Um, if you want, I'm okay with the click there. Click over while I'm playing. So me, I'm hanging on a C chord, ring, ring, ring. And I mean, the acoustic's going to be only hold out for four bar or four counts. So when I hit that ring, I want them all ready to go. So like on count two, the drummer goes click, 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 and they're going. And there's no downtime because people are locked in. I taper off the message, they're ready for the next one. So let's give it to them, uh, not wait. I mean, it's really funny. Don't wait three seconds. That is an eternity. It really is. Now. Again, this, I hope it doesn't sound like it's production value. My goal is presenting the best product possible and engaging people to it and not letting them disconnect. I think that's tricky. Uh, and so that's one way of doing it. Uh, you can transition that way. Or, you know, I only like the piano doing it because I need to shuffle my music. Uh, I do love it, though, if you have a lead instrument, if it's guitar on one song, just keep going. I've had to learn how to get good at tempos so that I can do that. If I'm not good at tempo, I can't do it. If you're bad at tempos, just tell your team, I'm bad at tempos, just help me out with it. Sometimes the, uh, the drummer can play hi-hat real light and keep you in there, you know, help you out, be like, oh, thank you, you saved my tempo. Uh, but you have to practice it. You can't actually just guess the tempo at random. I mean, go home, practice it. Okay, I'm doing this song, and now I need to go to the next one. So you need to learn to hit that groove next. And I'm in that pocket, and I know how to do that transition. I do like it going guitar to guitar, or the keys are on a key to key as a lead instrument between songs. I like it, you know, and let the, let the musicians creep back in. I, I would prefer a creep in than we all start on the downbeat. Who cares? That 
I've never been like, oh, I'm much more engaged in worship because everyone came in it together. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's not a CD. I don't care. Uh, not that you can't. It's just unnecessary. I would prefer a transition uh, being solid. So.